Hello and welcome to my first Starfield ship build guide. This will be for the Howitzer class frigate I posted on Reddit the other day. I had some folks in the comments ask if I could make a build guide, so I figured I'd give that a shot. And I wanted to preface this video by outlining some of the key features and the design choices that I focused this build around. The overall flavor I went for here is a military ship that's outfitted and crewed as an escort frigate. So to that end, the first part of the ship I focused on was the fully enclosed and vented railgun housing here in the front. And I'm really happy with how that turned out and how it flows into the rest of the ship. Second thing I wanted to highlight is something I challenge myself to do with every build, and that is to fully accommodate all crew. Everybody has a bed, there's a full mess hall, I have a full 3x3 cargo bay in there, and I'm pretty happy with how the companion way, the ladders and the doors flow throughout the ship, which you'll see in the ship builder. I really wanted this ship to have a sleek silhouette, and I went for a sort of gunmetal gray and darker gray highlight to really give this a sleek uh, silhouette and not really stand out too much when you're out in the void of space. In terms of silhouette, you'll notice as I get to the engines here, I've sacrificed a little bit of engine power to use the Nova engines. I really like the lines that they uh, end the ship with. And because I do have a C-Class reactor in the middle, we've got some C-Class engines back there just to give us some maneuverability. But because all our guns have such long range and because turrets are pretty busted in this game, the maneuverability isn't too big of an issue. So with that out of the way, let's get into the ship builder. All right, so hopping into the ship builder here, I'm gonna start with the landing bay, do the hab blocks, do the side cowlings, do the front, the rest of the cowlings, and I'll kind of talk about how I play around some of the stats that we ended up with in combat. So, starting with the landing bay, I have a 120 LD landing bay from Deimos, and this is facing backwards. So uh, the top of the screen here is the back of the ship. On top of that, I have a 3x3 cargo bay. I like the Deimos one for the flavor here. I like how the doors showed up, uh, but you can use any 3x3 hab here. This is going to line up with the middle and flush with the back of the landing bay, like so. And then behind that on the same level, I put a 2x1 workshop back in the middle of the cargo bay. I like the Nova one for the flavor, and I liked having it next to the cargo bay. I figure everything you're going to be working with is going to be here. To the sides of that workshop, I'm going to place two Deimos Hall A pieces, one on each side, flush with the cargo bay and the workshop. I found that putting one by one hab pieces here created doors and ladders that I didn't like, so these are just filler pieces. Underneath each of those Deimos Hall A pieces, I have an NG20 landing gear in the sort of thin variant. You're going to have to get these from the Nova Galactic specialty ship vendor, who is the ship technician outside the landing pad at New Homestead on the Titan planet in the Soul system. And these are going to sit right under the Deimos Hull A pieces. Just like that. Moving up a level in the hab block. I'm going to place my one by ones first because that's your best bet on forcing ladders and doors to show up where you want them to. So I'm going to place this one by one companion way on the back right of the three by three cargo bay. I'm then going to place my habs around that. So on the front, two by three mess hall, flush with the edges of the three by three cargo bay. I went with the Deimos mess hall here for flavor and I like where the door showed up on this side. Uh, you could choose another one, but again, this is supposed to be a military ship, so here we are. And then back behind this companion way, I put a Nova Galactic Armory. I chose this one because there's two suit lockers up in the front, and later we're going to put the docker uh, horizontally out next to this companionway, so having the suit lockers right there made sense to me. Up behind and to the side of this galactic armory, we're going to put a 2x2 two two engineering bay. Again, I like the demos for the flavor. It's got a lot of nice open exposed parts, uh, and the 2x2 two two just had all the bits and pieces that I wanted up behind the engines by the grab drive. Uh, and then I, I hid my grab drive. I used a one by one here because that's the space I had available to me. Um, and I didn't pick this one specifically for any reason other than it was the best one I had at the time available to me. So you can use any one by one grab drive here. And then in this space next to it will end up being two fuel tanks side by side. 
Uh, the other one's attached to the port cowling situation, but they'll end up sitting next to each other. Which is a nice little trick when you're lower levels or early game or don't have, you know, starship design. When you don't have the fuel per space parts unlocked that you want to use. It's a nice little trick to just put two fuel tanks facing each other. Our next tab layer is right here. Again, I'm going to use the one by ones first. And I went with storerooms specifically for this layer because storerooms have a higher chance of not pushing a ladder through the roof into the hab block above them. And I definitely wanted this vertical ladder column to end here, so I went with storerooms. I put another storeroom next to this first one so that I could put this infirmary off to the side. I went with the Nova Galactic Infirmary. I think it has the most functional space flavor-wise. Um, and I wanted it to be separated a little bit from the rest of the ship. Up in front of these two, uh, I have a Deimos 2x2 living quarters. I like to have some leisure areas for my crew, even on what I would consider to be a military ship, just to have some, you know, a lounge, chairs, places to, to sit and relax when you're off duty. Up next to that, I put a Stroud all-in-one berth B, specifically because this door wants to show up in the front here. And on the B variant of the Stroud all-in-one, the front right is where the galley normally shows up, but if I can get rid of that with a door, I don't have any unnecessary full stove situations when I have a whole mess hall down here. Up back here, I have a Nova Galactic living quarters. I like that this has the weight room, it's got extra beds, it has its own, its own bathroom and all that good stuff. So we have this here and then filling this this gap in again with a, with a mid bracer because I didn't want any more ladders or doors there. Moving up a level, again, I'm gonna put this one by one first. Now this will put a ladder down where the weight area is, but I couldn't find a better place for this to show up, so here it is. I have a 2x2 two two battle station up in front of that. I chose the Hope Tech. I like the lighting scheme, and I really like this front middle. It has a nice uh, console desk area with... I thought that would be where you'd fire the railgun from. So I put this here. Another Stroud all-in-one B variant, again, because the door wants to el eliminate the unnecessary galley here. Up in front of that, we have our cockpit. This is the Cabot cockpit, which you have to get from the same ship, ship technician in New Homestead, the uh, Nova, Nova specialty part. Up behind that, I have my captain's quarters. I went with the Hope Tech here because I like having my own bathroom, and it doesn't feel as cramped with the bed and the desk set up. Now, you will have a ladder show up in the back of this into the back of the battle stations. I couldn't get that to not show up no matter how I put these together, so just the best that I could do there. But that's your hab block. Now we're going to move on to the side cowlings. I'm going to start with the starboard side because that's where the docking port is. And for reference, you're going to take a Stroud Connect Pro Docker uh, starboard orientation. And I'm going to snap that to directly to this Deimos Companionway that's in the center of the side face here, right in front again of the Nova Galactic Armory where my suit lockers are. To the side of that, to fill this space, I put a Deimos Hall A piece. I like the way that the uh, outside face of this breaks up the design of the rest of the cowling. So you could go with the Stroud mid bracer if you want, but I prefer the, the Deimos Hall A here. And then up on top of the docker, I put a Galleon S202 cargo hold as soon as I have these unlocked up there. If you don't have these unlocked, you could use a regular Stroud cowling uh, without the top snapping point, and you'll get the same silhouette. Next to that, I put a Stroud cowling with that top snapping point. This is where we're going to put our turrets later. And then on the front and the back of this area, we're going to round it out with some Stroud cap A pieces. To round out the bottom, I've got a Stroud Cap A up in the back here, mirrored with the one we just placed. Under this front Stroud Cap A, I'm going to put a Stroud Nose Cap C, starboard four. And that's just going to sit right underneath. And then to round out this whole area, I have two Stroud Cap A's mirrored and facing outward. Put these right underneath what we got going here already. Moving over to the other side. Pretty much the same thing. We replaced the docker spot with another Deimos Hall A. 
and you'll notice I have pre-attached this, um, the partner fuel tank. This is going to connect specifically to the rearmost hull A here on the interior. So we'll place that first. Sorry, we'll place that next to it. needs a snapping point. We'll place that next to this hull A. So you can see it fits nicely in there, right? So we've got these two hull A's here. One on the back left of the 2x3 mess hull. And then next to that hull A, it's partner and the fuel tank. On top of that, again, I've got a galleon, but you can use the Stroud cowling without the top snapping point. Up in front of that is the cowling with the top snapping point. And then Stroud cap A, nose cap, Stroud cap A stack up in the front of those. The Stroud cap A on the bottom middle and two mirrored Stroud cap A's to round out the back of this. For the nose, we're going to take in some vertical slices, starting here. And this is going to attach directly to this exposed front face that we left from our hab block. So starting from the bottom, I have a Stroud mid bracer, a Deimos hull A, and a Stroud mid bracer. I use this hull A here so I had a good snapping point for the landing gear on the bottom. You could use any filler piece here. We're going to take these and put them on the bottom row up against the 3x3 cargo hold and in between the Stroud Cap A's that we put on the bottom of the side uh, cowling. The next layer here, I have a Stroud Cap B, a mid bracer, and another Stroud Cap B uh, with the curves facing so that the thinner edges are facing towards the rear of the ship on these straw cap bees. And those are gonna sit right here. For the top, I have a Stroud cowling with a top snapping point, a Stroud mid bracer, and another Stroud cowling with a top snapping point. And these are where our other turrets are gonna sit. Let's go grab our next vertical slice. So this is where I have uh, the reactor. This is just the best too tall C-Class reactor that I had access to. Um, if you want to use C-Class engines to get this thing to move at all, you're going to want to use a C-Class reactor, so whatever one you have available. And that's going to snap to the bottom middle of the uh, structural slice that we just placed. And then on the sides of that, on the bottom, I've got the regular Stroud cowling flipped so that the curve is on the outside which you can easily tell by the lights when you're flipping it around. Here's one for the other side. Up on top of that, I have more Deimos Hull A pieces. Again, I like the way that this breaks up the uh, outside face. I'm going to put one on each side. On top of that, I'm going to put some Galleon cargo holds. Again, if you don't have access to these, use the regular Stroud cowling without the top snapping point. And then here's where we put the railgun together. So let me go grab that. So the whole point of this ship really was to use this radiator to vent some sort of a railgun setup housed within a full uh, covering of, of you know, bearings. So it's really straightforward though when you get down to it. It's just right on top of the reactor I put a Hope Tech radiator and then flush with the top snapping point of the two tall reactor I put a Nova weapon mount so that it's right in the middle. And then whatever guns you want to use here are fine. I wasn't able to use the actual physical rail guns because their range is so small that I, I wasn't able to make them be effective with the maneuverability that we have. So I just used whatever longest range guns. And then to fill out this regular Nova weapon mount that we've got here, this is just a regular, this is not even a specialty piece. You're gonna want to uh, fill the outsides first with whatever guns you're gonna use. And then probably, depending on how big your guns are, you might not need to do this, but if you're gonna if you're gonna do this with like really big guns like this, for example, you can actually clip these guns into place if you duplicate them. So if you hover over this and duplicate it, the game is gonna try to put the duplicate in a nearby valid location with its own unique snapping point. 
if I accept this, it'll sit right there. But if I duplicate from the other side, and I don't move my screen or my view around at all, the game considers this to be valid. If I just accept it, this is, this is totally acceptable for the game. And all these will fire, they're not blocked by anything, it'll function as normal. So, little trick to get a bunch of guns shoved into one small area. But again, I went with these. So here we go, I'm gonna put these back in there. Then let's wrap these up with the front. All Stroud pieces here. Starting from the bottom, we have a Stroud Cap A. Flush with the Stroud Cowling we placed on the bottom of the last vertical slice. Another Stroud Cap A on the other side, and in between them, a Stroud Nose Cap B4 flipped to the bottom variant. So that it matches the curve of the Stroud Cap A's. On top of these side Stroud Cap A's, I've got another Stroud Nose Cap C. And you're going to have to clip these in, so I'm going to hold them in place. I'm going to manipulate them and let go. Same on the other side. So they're clipped into the guns, but again, it won't upset any of the functionality here. And then the top here is a Stroud Cap A, nose caps uh, B or top, and another Stroud Cap A on the other side. Moving on to the belly here. You're going to take... These are both NG20 landing gear, the wide variant. You just cycle through them until you get to the wide one. I'm going to put the forwardmost one on this Deimos Hull A and the other one right behind it, flush with the landing bay. Up in front of the first landing gear and directly under the reactor, I'm going to put a Deimos Belly 4. And then to either side of that, Stroud Cap A. These are in line with the first landing gear and the Deimos Belly. Back behind these two Stroud Cap A's, we're going to have two regular Stroud Cowlings, just again, so clips of the curve and the lights are on the outside. One on each side. And then on either side of the landing bay, I have two more Stroud Cap A's. And this creates a really nice silhouette flush with the landing bay. Really happy with how that turned out on the bottom. Moving on to the engines. We're going to place those first. Let me grab them here. I went with these Nova engines. There's different variations of these, but I really like the silhouette, uh, the curves that this continues from the rest of the ship. If you want to use more powerful engines and get more mobility, say if you've you know, completed the main story and you have Slate and Aerospace engines and that whole thing, um, feel free to do that, obviously, but I sacrificed some mobility for the silhouette here. And these are going to snap to the, the two HAB uh, pieces that we have just directly, so it should be in line with the two pieces that you see there. And then in line with what I have here is the, the Nova Galactic Workshop and the uh, back right of this 2x2 two two engineering bay. It's going to be the, the first of the stacked engines here. So again, that's in line with this the bottom of this half. And then we're going to have to... Uh, the game won't let me place this engine where I want it right now. It won't let you stack these two engines. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this up twice. Once, twice, and then get rid of the one we don't want. And this has enough valid snapping points for the game to be happy, and now it's where I want it, so there we go. To wrap this up, a lot more Stroud Cap A's. Four of them here. Top and bottom either side, so if you look right on top of these Nova engines and flush with the back, one, one on the other side, Flipping over to the bottom. See, we've got this nice space here where we're going to put one, one on the other side. Up on top here, I have a Nova cowling facing backwards. You're going to have to clip this because, again, the engine. So we're going to take this, hold it right above the companionway here, manipulate it, and let go. And then we've got two more Stroud Cap A's to put behind the cockpit here. On top of my captain's quarters, the space felt a little empty, so I put uh, two Demos Spine A's, one facing forward and one facing backwards, 
right on top of the captain's quarters. And then to cover up the sides of this top area, the, the two by two battle stations and this other, our second uh, Stroud all in one B, I have two Nova cowlings, one facing forward and one facing back to make a nice uh, curve here. And those are gonna sit right on these exposed snapping points to cover that up. One on each side. And then these three pieces are going to clip into the cockpit. One thing to keep in mind is that um, as I clip this into place, and this is going to be, you know, there's these two exposed snapping points right here that's going to sit on both of them. And I'm going to manipulate it and let go of it right there. The edge of this is rendered in the cockpit, and it does clip through the stairs a little bit. But it's it doesn't inhibit your ability to walk up and down the stairs, so I'm just kind of living with it because it looks so nice on the outside. Here's the other one on the other side. And then I have a Stroud Nose Cap B, which will sit on these two snapping points. You're going to have to clip that into place as well. And this does not uh, clip into any walkable area in the cockpit, so that's fine. Now the rest of our weapons and our shield. Uh, I personally, I, I clip the shield into this Stroud Cap A over here. To do that, I just, I just placed whatever shield I had access to at the time. And then I uh, clip this back into place. There's plenty of snapping points for this cap A to attach to, so we're good there. And then these top snapping point Stroud cowlings that we placed, each is going to get an equipment plate. Equipment plates are sold by anybody that sells tile parts. That includes like Red Mile or the ship technician on the landing pad at Neon, for example, will sell them. So not too difficult to find, but they are sort of specialty. And then just whatever turrets. Uh, the best turrets I had access to with good range I put on top of those equipment plates. And there you go. So in terms of stats, um, you only have 44 mobility. Again, I sacrificed some mobility for style. But because you have such long range with these weapons, these have 3,500 range, both of them. You're actually kind of okay. You don't need to turn and maneuver as much if you can stay at a distance and just blow things up from 3,500 meters away. Um, 4,100 cargo capacity is not a lot, but if you're running missions and selling often, I find it to be enough. It just creates a more active gameplay loop, and I don't mind that at all. You're seeing 17 let your jump range here, but because we have so much fuel, you can actually get a decent distance. So you're you're not uh, hampered in, in too significant a way there. 1450 shield is a pretty decent amount, especially when you start putting some points into the uh, shields in the skill tree. So you can you can take a pretty good beating with uh, 1450 shield, so we're pretty good there. And the weapons obviously pack a punch, so you're pretty effective. Um, I class this as a frigate for my flavor because it, you know, it's not your top of the line capital ship, but it definitely packs a lot of firepower and could, could probably escort uh, a bigger vessel. So. There's your build guide. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoy your shipbuilding, and uh, maybe I'll see you in the next one.